Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So my Enjoy. name is Brenda Hebsher. Um, it's so nice to have you all with us. Thank you for coming. And Yannick and Sasha, thank you, thank you, thank you for doing this webinar for us. Uh, Calibrite is um, proud, proud, proud of our ambassadors, and none more so than Yannick and Sasha. I, I have this, I want to tell this one little story about, I remember meeting them in a parking lot at some show, WPPI, I think it was, and Barry Burstein uh, introduced us to each other. And from that day to this day, I have r never met anyone who was more warm, more thoughtful, more giving, more generous uh, than these two are. And I admire you both so much. I admire your business model. I admire the work you do. Uh, the very uh, bio picture that I use myself, you shot in your studio when I came to see you yeah. one time uh, about color management. So uh, you make me look, you made me look so young and so nice. And I was only in a black T-shirt. So, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm all yours. So we thank you so much for being a, a Calibride ambassador. And we thank you especially for presenting this program today. Uh, this program, I think, is going to be one of the most beneficial that we've ever done because it's real hands-on, nuts and bolts, uh, how-to from people who know exactly how to do it and are literally making a living at it. So, Yannick, if there's more you want to say, uh, please do so. But uh, I will just say thank you, and I will be in the background answering questions and uh, carry on. Fantastic, thank you so much, Brenda. So um, let me switch quickly to my presentation. Yes, <laughs> here it is, okay. Um, so yeah, so I'm Yannick, my wife, Sasha. Uh, we both uh, are photographers um, here in California. And uh, let me just go to my slide here. Uh, so today, what we're gonna be uh, talking mainly are the high volume workflow or just steps or how to you know approach high volume headshots uh, you know um, and I'll, I'll tell you what is high volume what we understand about high volume and you know what, what we actually do. I know a lot of people have a lot of questions in uh, different uh, Facebook groups, um, so we're going to try to address them all. Who am I? And who is Sasha? <laughs> so, um, so uh, we've been uh, photographers. I mean, I've been professionally photographing for the last uh, seventeen years. Uh, Sasha joined me how many years ago? Nine? 2008, yeah. So nine years ago. 2011. <laughs> as my girlfriend first, uh, first as a last uh, assistant. And then she was my girlfriend first, then my assistant, not, you know, the other way. Uh, and today we're both running our business. Uh, and we started Headshots about seven years ago when we moved to California. Full uh, time. Full time. Uh, we moved from Chicago to California, uh, and I would say about 80% uh, of our business right now are headshots. Um, and we photograph well over 6,000 people every year. Uh, obviously, it was a little bit maybe uh, less the, the year of the COVID, but the second year, 2022, I think we went over well over 6,000. Uh, so I'm trying, 6,000, I think it's even pretty conservative. So, you know, we photograph a lot of people. Um, in studio, on location, at conferences. Uh, so we photograph, you know, I, I think the maximum was like a few thousand people, like two, two or three thousand people, you know, uh, on, a, on a high end in terms of as the one gig. Um, and then we also, you know, uh, as men, uh, Brenda mentioned, we are super honored to be Calibrite um, ambassadors, but we also work with the tool, with, with Teletools, with OSCOT, Ten by bags, Savage, and more paper. And, and also, if you're ever interested in using us for competition prints, we do have a company, Vasho Master Print, uh, and that's where we do uh, prints and uh, for competitions. And we focus mainly on WPPI and imaging. But you know, so if you're interested, just hit me up. Okay. Um, again, big thanks to Calbright. Uh, we use two products, and I'll mention them later. You know what? You know at what step in the workflow we use them. So. The question is, why even do high volume headshots? Um, what do you think? Good money? Cash money? <laughs> Cash money. <laughs> to survive. So by the way, this is me and Sasha here. We're in Orlando. So we photograph 4,000 people in this engagement. Uh, it was uh, four days, uh, basically full, you know, full days. Um, you know, we have two stations. 
And, you know, kind of the cool reasons or big, the biggest reasons, you know, uh, for high volume headshots is that companies need consistent look. And by bringing us uh, in one, you know, location in one spot and photographing everybody during their annual meetings uh, is definitely the, the easiest way for them to have a nice consistent look of, uh, you know, the headshots of everybody in their company or the management, the sales team, you know, whoever we photograph, okay? And then now, you know, in the last, I mean, headshots were important before, uh, but especially after, you know, headshots, I mean, after COVID, when um, more and more companies work remotely, uh, people don't have, you know, always the in-person contact, uh, in-person, uh, you know, ratios or, you know, kind of uh, working together in person. The headshots became becoming like more and more important. Um, and we basically try to solve this problem for the companies. Um, and once you do the higher volume, um, it's becoming a better value to the company because the per person fee, it's lower for them. But, you know, from our end, you know, because these are much bigger jobs, the money is also much better, you know, for us. So basically it's a, I would say like, it's a win-win situation, you know? Um, you know, another thing we do is also for headshots uh, at conferences. Um, so this is more as a marketing tool to the organizations or to the, the companies that hire us because they want to attract people to their booth. Or uh, if it's an organization that throws the, the, the conference, they want basically to have an extra value uh, added to the attendees of the conference. So that's you know how we get hired for, for conferences. Okay. Um, now, what we're going to cover today. Uh, so key challenges and solutions. So what are the, some you know, the things that you know, we struggle with or we, we've been struggling with and what are the solutions? Uh, the key steps in our workflow and then all the recommended tools. And if there's some additional questions, we'll answer them either uh, along the, um, uh, the, uh, the webinar or, or at the end. And also a lot of the information, um, you know, the, Sasha wrote an awesome article uh, lately that submitted to uh, some of the websites, so hopefully it will get published. So there will be a lot more information in the article. Today is kind of like the key things, you know, that I think are important. Um, so different people have different opinions or, uh, you know, understanding what high volume headshots are. Um, so for us, you know, how we define high volume headshots, it's not so much about the total number of people that we photograph. It's more how little time we have per person. So for us, you know, if we have less than 10 minutes, sometimes it's, you know, five minutes, sometimes it's two minutes, sometimes it's, it's even a minute. Um, I think we did the teachers, their school was how much it was like 30 seconds per person. Yes. It was, it was super fast. You know, I think we photographed 400 people in like what, four hours. Hardcore part. Yeah, <laughs> so it was like it was it was fast, you know. Um, so you know, so basically, the way we understand is anything under ten minutes per person. Uh, that's for us is high volume headshots. Okay. Now, what is a workflow? So, in the simplest definition of a workflow, is basically any manual or automated steps uh, that we have or we you know we do to work more efficiently. And uh, with more importantly, with repeatable results. Uh, so basically, we don't want to reinvent the, our whole process every time we photograph. So you know, once we tweak the process, you know, the, the workflow, you know, how we do everything, we basically you know pack the same stuff. We know that it works. When we get to the location, you know, we set up everything. I don't have to like stress that something's not going to work properly because I know that I've already tested it so many times, and I'm doing over and over the same way. Uh, so that you know, it's just less stress for me. Faster to set up, faster to photograph, and also faster to you know to tear down. And obviously, a good workflow makes you professional, and hopefully, you'll have repeat business. Yeah, that's you know once you provide a good value to the client, they are much more you know interested in um, uh, in working with you. Okay, so the key challenges. Um, so efficiency. So we're going to talk about the efficiency, how to be efficient, uh, space constraints. Uh, consistent lighting and color. So that's, you know, uh, we're going to talk about, you know, our lighting setups and how we make sure the colors are good. And actually, I'm going to do some live shooting of Sasha today uh, with those two setups that I discuss, uh, I'm going to discuss. Uh, poses and facial expression. I know that question was posed a lot um, at uh, Laurie Patrick's headshot group, you know, that people are interested in how we get the good expressions when we have so little time, you know, uh, you know when we do headshots. And then reliable technology and all the gear, you know, uh, so I'm going to talk about, you know, what's 
you know, over the years, you know, how we selected our gear and what we're currently using. Okay, so the first one is efficiency. Okay, um, so here are some efficiency killers, or you know, basically anything that will make you either slow down, stress, uh, or you know, uh, basically do not deliver. I mean, not deliver the you know consistent results. So. Um, inconsistent process, how we photograph from person to person. I think that's, that's you know, basically number one. Uh, lighting that is required bigger adjustment from person to person. And that I learned early on, um, you know, as you know, that I started to adjust, you know, because I was like, I wanted to have some lighting setup that's really cool, but I have to adjust, let's say, three or four lights for each person. And the more you have to adjust from person to person, uh, the more time you have to spend, per, you know, for each person. And the higher the risk is of the lighting not being consistent from person to person, because you know the more changes you have to adjust, you know, to make, you know, for each person, the 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 more the higher the risk of you slightly turning the light one way or another, and you know the, the you know the the feel will be a little bit different. Okay, uh, disorganized flow of people. Uh, so if people are not coming in the order they were supposed to come, or you don't know how often, you know, the, how fast they're going to be coming, or let's say. 10 people come in 10 minutes and then you wait for an hour, you know, because there's another, you know, uh, because somebody's in the meeting or something like that. So that kind of like put you, you know, under stress within those 10 minutes, but then you kind of relax and then you're bored. Uh, so, you know, the good flow of people is very important. Uh, flash misfires. And I'm not talking about um, flashes or any brand not being um, reliable. It's more about because we're using wireless triggers in different environments. There's a lot of uh, you know, noise in, in the air uh, for digital signal. So sometimes, you know, the, you know, doesn't matter how reliable you know, the, your flashes are in terms of like, you know, for example, in a studio, you can go to a conference uh, convention center or go to some office and suddenly when you have 30 or 40 different Wi-Fi's flying around, you know, the signal gets a lot, you know, a, a, you know, a lot more disorganized or kind of hard to follow, you know, from the camera to the flashes. So that's, you know, um, you know, um, the, the kind of the problem that we can have when we photograph from location. Um, unreliable tethering cables and slow computers and USB. Um, basically, get the latest and get the best quality. So, you know, tether, tail tool, the tether tools cables are absolutely the best in terms of quality. They're not the cheapest, but, you know, they're totally worth the money. I think in the grand scheme of things, uh, this is a small expense, but it's very, you know, very important to have the reliable connection between your camera and your laptop. And then, unfortunately, the latest laptops and the latest cameras have the fastest ports. So, you know, the fast, you know, the the, the faster the ports are, uh, the faster you're going to transfer the the files from your camera to the uh, to the computer. Basically, a good excuse for you to get a new laptop. Yeah. <laughs> um, and sometimes, you know, I'll talk about it later, but. Um, uh, you do not want to shoot uh, high volume headshots with your highest resolution camera. Uh, we actually photograph with R5 in the studio, but when we go on a super high volume um, uh, job, we use R6s uh, because they're slightly less, um, you know, uh, they have 20 something megapixels versus uh, 40 megapixels for the R5. And then terrible Wi Fi. So if you want to deliver uh, photos, you know, at the kiosk, uh, you want to have reliable Wi Fi. Um, I always talk with my client before that. Oops. Nope. <laughs> I don't want any uh, any phone calls right now. And then unreliable software. I'll be talking about the software, what we use, uh, and what's been reliable for us because we've been through some uh, horror stories, you know, in the past. You know how you know how to make our software you know work good. Okay. So solutions. Define steps, optimize for speed. And I'm talking about, you know, like everything we do, uh, you know, to, to basically cut the time that we spend per person. Um, and every shot matters, um, not only to photograph, but also to deliver the photos, to select the photos. So don't shoot like 50 photos for each person, you know, they, you know in five minutes. Uh, because one, they're going to have a much harder time selecting the photos, and then uh, you're going to have to transfer a lot more files between the camera, computer, computer to the uh, to the kiosk, etc. Um, so what we do usually do straight on, uh, feed a little bit to the side, feed the other side, and then you know. But we also always keep the, the face almost straight on, and I'm going to be talking about the posing uh, a little bit later. Okay, simplify lighting setup. I already talked about it before, but basically um, right now we use two main lights. Two, uh, two main lights you know, for this setup, and I'm going to be using one also light. I'll show you the one light solution as well. Um, 
the first photo that you saw on the um, um, uh, on the first slide actually was taken only with one light. So you know, so it's possible to do it. And the reliable gear, gear and uh, fast gear, I already talked about it. So um, basically, uh, oh, one thing I did, I forgot to mention, proper channels. So whenever you go um, and whatever brand you're using of triggers, Profoto, Westcott, Godox, or whatever else you use, always, you know, practically every, every gear ha or every trigger has a function to scan the channels and recommend which channels to, uh, to work on. So always follow that because in, if you choose the wrong channel, you're going to be guaranteed you're going to have a lot more misfires. So, you know, sometimes, you know, when we have a lot of noise and we, I didn't do it, I would have like up to 10% of misfires, um, you know, when I was photographing, which is a lot, you know, especially if you take, if you consider, you know, uh, 5,000 photos that you, you, that you take and 10% 10, 10 of misfires, that's basically 500 photos were misfires. So that's a lot. So um, proper channels are extremely important, okay? Um, let's go to the space constraints. So as you can see, this was kind of extreme what we did in New York for one of the companies. Uh, so this is like the one, you can see here one main light and then you know, two lights on the, on the, back, uh, on the background. Uh, but you can see how close is the camera to the wall. And I actually, this was the most extreme, I could not be behind the camera here so I was standing by the camera, but I was telling them to always look toward the lens uh, because you know I just didn't have enough space to, um, uh, you know, to 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 be behind the camera. And they wanted the hatches a little bit uh, further down, so that's why you know I had to have a little bit more space. I didn't want to use a wider lens uh, because then the you know the, the this I guess the the lens characteristics will change a little bit, and you know, and this was a continuation of the same hatches that I did. For them uh, a few months ago so i wanted to keep exactly the same way um you know so that's why i have to use the same lens okay okay um now the solution so talk to the client about the space as soon as possible uh you know we, we tell them that you know we usually need at minimum 10 by 10 uh feet space uh and then very important because you're going to hear this a lot oh yeah we have a big conference room right well, the conference room is not always the best because you have this conference room, uh, I mean, conference table right in the middle and you cannot really, uh, you, know, you know, set up all your gear. So when you say 10 by 10 open space, you have to make sure that you tell the client, I need actually open space or so without anything, okay? Sometimes, you know, you know if, if the situation is really tough, I still can do around the conference table, but, you know, always ask for more and then you can always adjust if needed, okay? Okay. Um, and then what's important that, you know, the setup that we, uh, that we use, and I'm actually quickly going to change. So this is basically the setup of the studio now. Um, we have, you know, I set up a little bit more than normally, uh, but, you know, I can easily put this in a 10 by 10 space, you know, so that's, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty easy to do it. Um, so either one of the setups I'm going to show you uh, in just a bit, uh, you know, we want to make sure that everything is condensed, okay? So you don't, you don't, put a lot of reflectors, et cetera, you know, so, you know, because, you know, we don't always have the same uh, space. And even, let's say you photograph five times for a client, you know, you know uh, because you photograph different groups in different places, you may have a lot of space uh, in one office, but in the next office, you don't have a space. Like, I, you know, I showed you before. So you want to be prepared to always shoot in a small space so that when you go from location to location, it doesn't you know, create problems that something, oh, shoot, now before I had so much more space, so my setup was different, now I have a lot less space, I have to adjust the, you know, the, the setup and the lights, the, you know, the results may be a little bit different. So you know, always try to condense, even if you have a lot of space, try to keep it condensed, okay? Um, the next one is uh, pretty important, I think. Um, I try to, I always recommend my client to put, in, put us in a space when there's not much foot traffic somewhere in the corner. So then when I photograph somebody, you know, they don't get 10 people looking at them and making comments, you know, about their facial expression or anything, or, or you know, or look, you know, look good. Oh yeah. Oh, don't do this. or don't do that. I basically want to have a one-on-one -on -one connection with the person I photograph. Doesn't matter how fast, you know, I go you know, through person to person, but I want to have that one-on-one -on -one connection with the person I photograph. Obviously, if you photograph at big conferences and your, you know, your booth is set up, at, I mean, your, your, your you know, headshots is set up in one of the booths, 
uh, then uh, you, you're going to have people, <laughs> you know, 50 or more people staring at you. So that, that you cannot avoid. But, you know, if, uh, you know, if you can, then, you know, try to, to have a space where there's no really people looking at the person that is being photographed. And then this is more for um, uh, conferences, but you know, also for businesses, it makes sense. Uh, think how people are going through the, the whole flow, you know, of entering, where do they sign up, if they have to sign up, how they're being photographed, which way they enter, which way they, they exit, where they're going to select the photos, when they're going to, you know, uh, or send the photos to themselves, and how they exit. So basically, you want to have a flow of people through your station so that, you know, there's no kind of like confusion where to go next. Okay. So that's, that's very important. It's going to make your process, you know, much, much faster this way. Okay. Okay. Now we're getting into the lighting and colors. So uh, Brenda, do we have any questions so far? Yeah, we do. Let's address just a few of them. If you don't mind, uh, let's see. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to take some that re refer to where you are right now in the presentation, and then I'll hold some right. others for later. Um, <clears throat> how long does it take in time for your initial setup now that you have a system in place? Um, I usually I like to arrive 90 minutes before uh, I start the photographing the first person, um, but I can set up everything in 45 minutes. Um, so I basically give myself an extra 45 minutes in, in case, you know, I have some problems getting to the, to the place where I photograph. I have to take, go to the different entrance because of the freight, freight elevator, because sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, with my bags, you know, they'll ask me to go to a different elevator, but yeah, 45 minutes, you know, I can set up everything, you know, basically, you know, from bringing the bags to being ready for the first uh, person being photographed. Great. Thank you. Now, does this, does the space available determine the type of lighting and background you set up or do you just uh, you, this 10 by 10, I think, is what you're asking for. And uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see no, the lighting. Yeah. So the lighting and I, I, I'll tell you, you know, more about it before, uh, later. But basically, the lighting for the headshots depends on two things, um, the number of people or the, num the amount of time I have per person. That's one thing, and two, uh, the uh, whether they're gonna be selecting one photo and then I'm gonna retouch that, or they're gonna basically go to the kiosk and send the photos to themselves. Okay. So, so that's you know that's really the, the two decision points how I decide which lighting setup I uh, setup I use. And just just one clarification: the ten by ten does include the the area for them to choose, or is the ten by ten yes. just the shooting area? Sometimes, yeah, so sometimes it's on the outside. Yeah, so you see, like in this photo, yeah. um, you know, in this presentation, uh, I mean, on the slide here, yeah, you see that I'm photographing here. I have my laptop, and then I have my kiosk right next to you know, uh, you know, to my camera. Okay. okay. So 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 basically, this is the kiosk that's closer here is where they sign up. They go to the, you know, uh, I don't, do you, can you see my mouse or no? No, we can't. Oh, let's see. Let me see if I can let me see. Uh, no, I can't. So the okay. one on the little stand, the iPad. Yeah, the little stand by the chair. But yeah. then you, you see there's a second kiosk. It's a little bit, you know, uh, small, but by the backdrop, there's a second kiosk over there. Okay. Oh, I see it uh, now. But, yeah, it's hard yeah, to see. So that's yeah. where they select the photo. Okay. That's where they were selecting the photos and sending the photos to themselves. Okay. So you're not selecting them. They're selecting them. No, when when yeah when they uh, when they send the photos to themselves, uh, they send they select those photos themselves. When uh, they select one photo to be retouched, they also select the, the photo themselves. So basically, okay. I let them choose the photo. And next question, do you use Cam Ranger? No. Okay. Uh, let's go back. I know uh, some people use, I, I don't use it. I don't, I never tried it. So, but, you know, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I just haven't tried it. What's your, what's the, the sort of the, the lowest uh, you would use on a, on a half frame camera what, uh, for focal length, 85? So I use 85, um, yeah. you know, for, for all my headshots, whether okay. in studio on location, and this is on full frame. So, you know, crop sensor, obviously you have to shoot a little bit wider, you know, wider lens, uh, but on the full sensor it's 85. Are you using uh, prime lenses or uh, zooms or both? I use prime, so 85 prime. Um, the only time I, we photograph on one conference and we 
had less than 10 by 10 and I actually had to shoot with a 2870, so with a zoom lens, because I had to be so super close. It was not my preferred, uh, you know, lens, but you know, I was shooting at 70 millimeter, and that, you know, because the fire um, was called the, the fire marshals. Yeah, the fire marshals. They didn't want me to step even a step outside the booth with my camera. So uh -huh. I had to be within the, within that, you know, the booth. So that's why I had to use 2870. Okay. Uh, do you use a light meter to set your lights up? No. No. Okay. So everything is is distance and power and ratio. And so you've already predetermined that before you get there, right? No, actually, you know, I mean, I, I know the ballpark of lighting that I, you know, that for each setup I have. Um, but no, I mean, right. I, I think, a, you know, a light meter uh, is, is good when you really on location and you don't ha you don't tether, you know, the, the camera to your laptop. Because right. you know when you tether, you know, when you tether and you see the photo on this ca on this calibrated yeah, right. screen, you know what the photo is on a calibrated look like. screen. That's right. Yeah, yeah, you do exactly. Okay. You know, uh, so that's why it's so important. You know that you know that's why we tether. That's why we calibrate the screen because we know you know once the photo is on the screen, you know. So what if the if the if the light meter will tell me that it's you know too bright or too dark, but I look on the screen and the screen is calibrated and I know that I need to make some adjustment. That's basically, you know, the, the, the manual adjustment will take over. Okay. And whether you shoot horizontal or vertical, is that determined by the job before you start? Um, I always shoot horizontal, so landscape mode, um, because I can make a vertical headshot out of a, uh, after, after, uh, right. out of a horizontal frame. I cannot make a horizontal. I mean, it's much harder to take a, a, a horizontal headshot out of vertical. Okay. Now there are a lot more questions, but let's jump back into the presentation yeah. okay. and then come That's back. What to lighting, you know, um, uh, for now. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. In just a second, uh, babe. Uh, so let me go to my presentation for a second. Okay. So as I mentioned, the simplified lighting. So it may not be the sexiest lighting. Right. Um, you know, as, as photographers, we like to have, you know, the super cool lighting and, you know, um, sometimes four or five lights and, you know, we want to tweak it, you know, to the perfect lighting, you know, uh, I do it in the studio and when I have one person, I'll tweak the light, you know, uh, until I have the perfect, you know, results so with high volume, um, you have to give up a little bit of the, the special thing about the lighting, uh, for simplicity, and then for you know how little adjustment you have to make from person to person, okay. So that's a that's the biggest kind of mind shift that we have to make when we photograph high volume versus individual you know uh, session. Um, fewer lights, not only so fewer lights is less adjustments and also less of a chance to to get a misfire because if you have if you use five lights, you know the the chance of one of them misfiring or not firing properly is much higher than if you use you know, two lights or three lights. You know, so it's just basically you know, every light you add on, uh, it adds complexity to the signal. Okay? Um, and then I know a lot of people ask me before that, uh, because in the studio, I use the Westcott um, Cineflexes, so those are the LED lights. On location, I never use them. Uh, and it's not because they're bad or, or, or not. It's just because when I go on location, I do not know what lighting or ambient lighting I'm going to have in that place. Um, and because those are continuous lighting, I have to overpower uh, the light that I have whatever I'm, I'm photographing. Like in my studio, I can just dim the light and I'm all good. But if I go to the conference, I, I have no control over the lights. And those fluorescent lights from the top, if they, you know, give me some, you know, um, pollution, light, you know, light pollution on the photo, the photo is going to look bad. The only way to do it is to bump up the, the, the LED lights to, you know, even higher volume. Uh, I mean, higher level. Uh, so then I don't, I kill the ambient. But then, you know, nobody wants to be in front of the, the Cineflex lights at 80% or 100%, you know, power. Because you, you go blind, you know, or just your eyes will hurt like crazy. I run them at 50, sometimes, you know, uh, 30%, and already people, you know, are, you know, uh, are saying that the, the, those are bright. So, you know, so you know, that's why I use strobes always on location, okay? Um, and then, you know, the, as I mentioned before, as the, the less you have to adjust every light, the less chance is that you're going to change the distance between the light and the person you photograph, uh, because you want that this distance to be as... Uh, 
you know, as much the same as possible, right? Um, you know, if you put them a little bit back, the fall off, the light fall off is a little bit, you know, uh, larger so that, you know, you're not going to have a- extreme uh, differences. Uh, but you try to keep the distance, you know, as much as possible, and the same distance between the light and the person as much as possible from the, you know, from, uh, for each person. Okay, so now uh, when I photograph, I tell it to capture one. I use the camera, uh, the, the presets, you know, so for my flashes, and I'll show you just a second. Uh, and then I do, you know, when I start, I always, uh, you know, do the, you know, the, uh, the Calibrite color checker to get the proper color. So let me switch quickly to um, my, is this, this one? Okay, so this is one I started earlier today uh, when I was testing with Sasha. Uh, so I always on the capture one in in in, in, a, in session. Uh, let me just hear. Okay, so you can see my screen. So I started, you know, first just the, the kind of like what the background is. Then you know, a one light didn't fire, so you know, so I, I basically had to turn on the other light. I you know, once I had like the exposure kind of how I want it, I ran the color checker with uh, with Sasha. So uh, let me uh, do this together. Uh, so basically, the the colors is is not crazy, but you know, but it makes you you know a true color the, the way you want it. So basically, what I do for the color checker is is just a standard gray card. So you know, I take the uh, the white balance tool and I just click you know either on the medium gray or the lighter gray. You know, if I want to like a special feel, you know, I can you know I can go through these colors as well and to see which one will give me you know the the the, the best feel that I want. I usually like. Usually these, the, the two gray colors will give me what I want, but if I'm like not 100% happy with this, I try the other you know, gray, you know, and this is what's cool about the, the color checker, that you have all the different you know, slight variation of the, of the gray color, so make it a little bit you know, uh, warmer, cooler, with a different um, tint on the, on the magenta green stuff. Um, so yeah, so, and then you know, once I take this, the next photo will already be calibrated. Uh, so. You know, so that's basically, you know, uh, that's the, the photo that's calibrated. I may adjust it further, you know, like since I know my monitor is calibrated, so I can make, you know, slight adjustments if I see, okay, maybe there's two, two green still, you know. So, you know, the, the color checker is my starting point, and then I do tweak, tweak, tweaks, you know, to make sure that I w- the, the photo is the way that I want it, okay? Um, so let me go back to this. So then I, I you know, I had a good color. Then I, I tweaked the light a little bit with Sasha until, you know, I got one with the mic and then one, you know, I, I shot few with, you know, without the mic. Okay. So, uh, if you have a question, why do I have the light in, in the frame? So, uh, if, uh, <laughs> if, I, if, if the person uh, selecting the photos, that photo will be retouched, I'm okay to have the, 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 the West, I mean, the, the softbox in the frame. If they send those photos to themselves right away, then of course I'm not going to have the softbox in the frame. So that's the kind of one big determinant. Okay. Now, Sasha, let's me uh, let's get this, and I'm going to quickly. Uh, where is this uh, iPhone? Here it is. Okay. So Sasha holding the phone. So I'm going to walk to the studio, and I'm going to show you uh, how everything is set up. Okay. Coolness. So. Two light, so this is the two light setup. Um, I have, you know, two strip lights. It's kind of like a a version of extension of my kind of improvisation of Peter Hurley's triangle, uh, except I don't. I use the uh, the uh, the highlighter below, not an extra flash. And the reason why I'm using the highlighter below is because uh, to reduce the number of flashes that I need to adjust and the what. Tell me. What are you talking? Well, I'm here, so look at me here. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Sasha, you showed me some sign, but I'm like, I don't know. What so she tells me basically you talk to the camera. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so basically two strips. Uh, one is kind of like a, you know, uh, a little bit, you know, horizontal, but like maybe 45. Uh, this one is straight on. Uh, white, I, I, and I use the white reflector. I don't use the, the silver one. Um, and I use a small light stand, so then I can make it super low if needed. Um, and that's it. Maybe come from the side, uh, Hashem. So basically, that's what it looks like here, uh, you know, from the side. And this is what it looks like from the person uh, that is being photographed. So 
the two things that I need to, you know, for each person, if they, if they vary drastically in height, is this light um, and then, you know, obviously these two lights. So those are the only two, two lights that I need to adjust for each person uh, if they vary in height drastically. You know, maybe more than like two, three inches. So that's why I adjust it. Um, so that's light setup number one, okay? And the uh, backlights. Oh, and, and then I have two. Um, yeah, actually, it's very good. Uh, you know, uh, I know a lot of people ask me, you know, in the group about it. I do use, so I use the XJob Pro as my backdrop. Um, come over, actually, come over here, uh, maybe from the back. So right now, the footprint is pretty big, but I know a lot of people, you know, um, were complaining that the XJob or the XJob Pro has a pretty big footprint. So if I have, if I don't have enough space. I can bring this legs practically like this. So now the footprint of the whole backdrop is, I would say it's even less than legs of a C stand. Um, so that's, um, you know, that's, you know, that's pretty, pretty much how little space I can have to like job. The only problem I have one in uh, Orlando when I was photographing a larger gr group of people, they put me in the hotel uh, and they were opening the doors, uh, outdoor doors by the backdrop with a lot of like air flowing. And because this is so light, you know, I had to really be careful that the egg job didn't fly, you know, didn't fall. Uh, so I had to like put some you know, boards in between and then try to, you know, tell them, to, uh, I tried to tell them not to use that door so much, but that, you know, if you're in a closed space without much flow of the, you know, of the, of the air, that's actually, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty good backdrop. And obviously the light here behind the backdrop, which no, is it. So we're not. Yeah, this doesn't do anything. Out. Yeah. This is, <laughs> this is just extra light. Yeah. The ladder either. No, that's, that doesn't do, <laughs> there's no purpose for the ladder. <laughs> And then I use much smaller strobes uh, for the backdrop, uh, mainly because they're so easy to pack, uh, and I don't really need a lot of power. Those are FJ 200s, so the you know 200 watt seconds, and I run these at uh, power three right now. Um, I use the same power on both sides just to basically light up a little bit the, the backdrop. Um, and I can, I mean, I can bring the backdrop even like when this is you know the the soft light. I can really bring it even here. Right, the closer you're going to bring the backdrop to the light where you photograph, the more the more these lights will hit the backdrop. Uh, but then, as you adjust these lights, it's going to be much harder to keep the backdrop consistent from person to person. So that's why I prefer to have two lights, um, you know, on the background, and that gives me the consistent gray tone uh, when I photograph each person. Okay, coolness. Any questions about that? Because I know a lot of people have questions about that. Let's switch cameras because my hand is super <laughs> shaky. <laughs> oh no, you did a you did a great job. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's let's answer a few more questions. <clears throat> so uh, one question: uh, your preferred aperture. It's an interesting question because it determines whether your background's in focus or out. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So. My standard one uh, is actually uh, five point. If I use strobes, it's five point six. Um, even like in the studio, I shoot four point five with the with the LEDs. Uh, but um, you know, five point six. I basically do a first shot to see whether I can I kill all ambient. Uh -huh. right? I kill the ambient uh, at five point six. At you know, let's say ISO two hundred and two hundred of a second. Uh, then I'm good, right? Because I, I'm okay to shoot a 200 ISO or 400 ISO as long as I don't have any contamination of the light. Right. If I do, then I'm going to lower ISO to 100. Yeah. And then if still I have some contamination of light, then I'm going to start to raise the f-stop. Got it. Uh, but uh, basically, the, the whole point is to kill the ambient. Got it. Got it. You want to control the light. Now, um, do you use the West Coast? Oh, oh, Let me just talk. Sasha, can you grab another battery from the, from the camera? Uh, for the camera because it's dying here. Yeah. We don't want, right, we don't right, want you right. to die. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Brenda. Okay. I'm listening. Yeah, no worries. Um, it says, do you use the Westcott 8x8 or 5x7? Uh, normally 8x8. Okay. And um, your most your most popular backdrop or your favorite backdrop is the gray, I assume? Gray, yes. Yeah, yeah. gray. I, do all, I use only white only if it's explicitly requested by the client. Yeah. Um, you know, because if you have white, you have to, uh, you know, 
power those flashes, uh, you know, much more. And then obviously with the white, I don't have any, I don't travel with any um, um, V flash or anything like that to block the light hitting back the person. Right. And then when you have, you know, when you have white, you have, you run into the risk of reducing the contrast uh, and also have flare, you know, so that's right. why, you know, I don't, I, I try to do great. Now, then, oh, going back to the backdrop for a second. Yeah. I have one frame, but I always go with the eight by eight and the five by seven the actual material. Uh -huh. So because the frame works with both. So okay. if I get in the space and I don't, and the eight feet, you know, the ceiling is less than eight feet, I uh -huh. can put the five by seven and I still have, an, you know, backdrop to, you know. For a headshot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, now you talk just a little bit more about strobe versus net, uh, versus constant light. You were talking uh, about it, strobe gets you down to a smaller pack size when you're off site, right? Yes, yes. But but there's no real downside to using uh, constant light if you're if you're in your studio because you've got enough room, correct? Oh, in the studio, I just I love the the uh, uh, the Cineflex. Uh, because I, I think, you know, that the lights, I mean, the eyes look a little bit better with, uh, with the LEDs. Okay. Uh, so that's why in the studio, I use the flex, you know, the Cineflex. Uh, but for example, today I have more lawyers coming from this company, Sweet James. Uh, and because originally I photographed them with the strobes in their office. So the new, the new lawyers that are going to come today, even though I'm going to shoot in the studio, I still going to photograph them with the straws to be consistent with the look they had in the studio, uh, in their office. Right. And, and I'm going to ask a dumb question. I, I think I already know the answer. If you're fighting ambient light, then you're going to use strobe because you've got more power. Yes. Yeah. That's why on location, yeah. I always use strobes. I never use LED lights on location. Okay. All right. Got like, it. Never, ever. Uh all right, we got a lot more questions, but let's go on back to the presentation okay. and we'll so, wrap up. So, if you can go back um, uh, to the, I'm going to photograph you now. Um, let me just switch my scene here. Okay, so, and I'm going to switch maybe my camera to this guy. Okay, so you're going to see me shooting. Okay, so, so maybe you're going to push your forehead slight, you know, forehead forward. That's it. That's it. That you got. You got. Oops. I, the flashes went to sleep, so I need to turn them on. Give me one second. These are good. 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 Okay. These are off. Let me make sure that uh, since we had the break. Uh, this. Okay. Okay. All good. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Turn your face slightly this way. Perfect. There's one hair that I need to fix. There you are. And I'm actually okay. Uh, to you know, to to fix the hair when I photograph a person. Turn your face slightly this way. Awesome. Now turn your face tiny bit this way. Your feet, your feet. I'm sorry. And turn your face more toward me. Push your forehead more toward me. Perfect. You give me a face like you're up to no good. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So took a few photos. Um, that will be you know. I mean, I could live with that. You know, if I have five minutes or two minutes per person, I could actually live with this set of photos. Um, let me see. And I photograph. Oh, nine. Okay, so I actually do, you know. So basically, uh, these will be the photos. So you can see I did straight on. Obviously, I wouldn't, you know, maybe I'll just delete this one quickly. Uh, Save it for blackmail. Oops. Yeah, so maybe this one will go. And then those will be the photos, okay? So this will be a set that I'll, I'll be happy if I have a two minutes per person. I'll actually, you know, be uh, be happy with the set because um, I have good expressions. I have, you know, tiny smile, bigger smile, you know, very subtle smile with, you know, no teeth. Basically, it covers all the bases. Okay, and obviously, I wouldn't have the mic on the lady, but <laughs> so um, yeah. So the basically, um, you know, uh, I also I forgot to mention that I do have my presets here for for strobes. I have Vasha strobes and I have Vasha. Uh, you know, preset for LED light, but I'm so basically that's my starting point. And my, uh, I mean, I do some adjustments in um, in Capture One, as you can see, but nothing, nothing major. Uh, you know, pretty basic, just to give, you know get the clean, clean tone um, out of the photos. Okay. Any questions about this? What we just did? Okay, let's have a look. <laughs> 
You typically having people stand, stand or sit, and how do you deal? Oh, yeah. with I'm, yeah, I'm going to answer this in just a second. So I'll, okay. I'll you know pass this you know pass this uh, question. All right. Uh, I'm I don't really understand this question, so that's why I'm going to answer ask it. Is there a reason you do not use a smaller pop up for headshots? A smaller. I'm assuming it means a background, a smaller background for headshots. Oh yes, um, yes, I, there is. Um, you know, so smaller pop-ups meaning you know something. Can you grab one from the from the room? Uh, like the yeah, the collapsible ones. Okay. Um, yeah, I have I have actually the collapsible backdrops, uh, and I'll show. And I um, yeah, and there's one in the bag. You know, the just the material weight. So the collapsible backdrop, uh, they only take less space in theory. And actually, in reality, they take a lot more space. Okay. Um, because when you fold them, they, it's a big circle. Okay. 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 Sasha brought one. Um, that's that's how big. You know, and this is one from Savage. Right. That's how big it is. Okay. If you fly with this, you know, what, how do you pack this? You know, there's there's no way to pack this in a you know in a suitcase in a small suitcase or in my rolling cases. Yeah, um, and you have big rolling cases. And I have big rolling cases. Actually, you know, do you want to uh, take the phone? And I'm just gonna quickly show what cases I have. Take the camera, and I'm just gonna put here. And then, okay. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. show that. And then yeah. I've got one more uh, really good question for you right yeah. here. So this is this is what the eight by eight, right? This is the eight by eight. Yeah, this is the eight by eight. This is what the material actually can be packed in, and this goes into one of this, you know, rolling cases. Super easy, I put it in this rolling case and I'm done, right? There's no way that I can pack this in this any of these cases. Right. So if I drive, yeah, I can do this. But I, I want to have the same setup, whether I fly, I drive, uh, you know, or take any other transportation, okay? So, so that's, that's, that's the reason why I don't use collapsibles. Now, you, you, what about tips for posing and getting good expressions quickly? Because people seem awkward, you know, when they sit down. Yeah. So, you know, um, actually, let me switch to the camera here. Okay. Tasha, come over here. Okay. So, when I, uh, it's, not, it's on. I know. Yeah. So, when somebody comes, I always ask them, you know, if they're for a company, like, how long they work for the company. I always ask them what position they do, you know, what, you know, what, what they do for the company. You know, I, if I can relate somehow, oh, sorry, if I can relate somehow to the, to the person, I always, you know, try to relate. So basically put the conversation off being photographed, right? So I don't want them to start, you know, constantly thinking that they're being photographed. Okay. Then I tell them that, you know, and this will, will be one of the tips that I put here for posing. So basically put the, you know, I tell them to push your forehead forward, slide your chin down, okay? And then, you know, I, you know, it all depends on the person. You know, sometimes the person, you know, uh, and then here it is, they will pose like this and then do this. And they give me the, <laughs> you know, the biggest smile, camera smile. I said, like, kill the smile. I don't want, I don't want, I want, I want you to give me the smallest possible smile, no teeth first. That's usually what I go for. Right. So, you know, uh, so let me switch here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. here it is. Okay. Um, so, Sasha, hand to the side of your body, push your forehead slightly forward without leaning forward. Okay. And give me the smallest possible smile. Just a tiny bit. Just bring the corners of your lips a little bit closer to your ears. Just a tiny bit. Perfect. Perfect. Now, I want you to flare your nostrils a couple of times. <laughs> And then I'll move to your ears. I want to like tuck in those ears a little bit more, okay? Tuck in those earlobes because they're sticking out, you know, I, they, they are affecting your hair here. Okay, good. Turn your face slightly this way for me. Turn down a little more. Perfect, perfect. You got it. Awesome. So this is, you know, I, I constantly tell them, I, I have a conversation with them nonstop, okay? Um, I want to tell, you know, I don't... I don't stay silent practically for a second. I always talk to oh, them. Oh, you're kidding. You, you don't stay silent? No. Nope. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, so tell me this. How do you how do you deal with eyeglasses on this deal? I mean, um, how do you keep actually, the how do you keep the flash out of the eyeglasses? So uh this guy so this setup, as I mentioned before, I use this setup if I have to retouch the photos. 
Um, if I if I if I set up that I don't you know I don't retouch the photos, I use the other one which I just showed you because if you know most people nowadays they have the anti reflective coating on their glasses and actually this will not you know do you want to take a photo of me? I have glasses. Okay, so I'm gonna go a little bit here. You gotta squat down more. Okay. That's more? It. Not okay. too much. Too much. Too much. Okay. Give me your innocent face, like you're super innocent. Yeah, we can't really see you guys, but we'll see the picture. Oh, oh, sorry. Let's give the camera to one here. That's good. Uh, one second. There he is. There it is. Okay. That's yeah, a I handsome can... man. <laughs> Give me a face like you just farted. <laughs> <laughs> Turn your nose Maybe you bit. farted. Maybe. <laughs> and a little bit this way. Too much. A little less. Don't don't flirt so much with me, please. That's it. Okay. So let's see. I'm with glasses, absolutely no reflection in, you know. Oops. Right? I mean at least I didn't see any. Outstanding. Thanks. Right? No, no. Okay. No, 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 you know, and I, you know, so I have anti-reflective coating, right? Um, a little bit here, a tiny bit more. But if for any reason somebody comes with the, like the cheapest glasses, absolutely no coating whatsoever, um, then um, I'm going to ask them to take the glasses. I'm going to take, you know, uh, three photos. One, two, I mean, straight on this side, this side, so I can have the clean eyes on, on uh, different angles. And then I tell them, put your glasses on and then I photograph. So if I have some really reflection that I cannot, you know, um, I do it by uh, light manipulation. And I don't want to manipulate the light too crazy because then it's going to change the characteristic of the light. Uh, and that's going to, you know, the whole purpose of being consistent from person to person, you know, will go away. Uh, so then I, you know, my retoucher will basically borrow the, the little, you know, whatever they need to borrow to, you know, to fix the eyes. But this is only when I... You know, in a in a in a gig that I know that I'm going to be retouching a photo for each person. Okay, um, if I don't retouch, so let's actually that gives me to uh, takes me to the uh, the next lighting setup. Um, so as I set up this, uh, maybe Brenda, you can read the next question and I can answer them. Uh, let's see. Do you calibrate at the location? I no, I don't. I calibrate the monitor once a month. Okay, good. Good man. All right. Uh, do you take all the batteries out of your cameras and strobes after each session? Uh, no. Okay. And uh, let's see. But I always make sure that I, wherever I go, I always want to make sure that all my batteries are fully charged. Yeah. And did you, so you're going to stand and sit after this. And, and, and I mean, this is, I think I know the answer to this. Why do you use capture one instead of Lightroom? And the answer is cause I like capture one. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, Lightroom historically in the past was a little bit if you're with tethering. So that's, I, that's when I switched to, uh, to capture one. And I think the tones, I think the, the nuances of the skin tones are a little bit better in Capture One. But um, uh, also, I talk about it later, but there's also functionality Capture One Live, which I use all the time. Uh, that unfortunately, you know, Lightroom doesn't have. Um, and those are the main reasons. All right. And are you going to start uh, talk about what uh, software you use for your kiosks and stuff later? Yep. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the presentation then. Okay, so I'm going to quickly do the other setup, actually. Still working on so that. This is, the, this is the one light setup um, that I use on location um, when I have a super large number of people. And this is always much harder to set up initially. Okay, can you give me a Sunday, honey? Uh, one of these over there by the wall. Yeah, it's always sandbag stuff, especially when you're on location. <laughs> okay. So here's a really good question, really interesting question. When you're managing uh, super hot, fast, high volume shoots mm -hmm. uh, with, with any given setup, when you have people under five feet to over six feet and there's no time mm -hmm. to adjust the height, how, how do you deal with that? Yeah, so this is, this is the actual the, the setup that I'm going to show you now. Okay, great. Okay. Go for it. Um, so do you, want, do you want to take the uh, cell phone for a sec? Yeah. And I'm going to quickly switch here 
to iPhone. Okay, okay. So one light setup, um, and basically it's just almost like a clamshell kind of feel. Um, and I use the boom light, uh, the Campbell, which allows me to make adjust the flash up, or I mean down or up, without adjusting the the light stand. Okay. So basically, you know, when somebody comes super high, I just basically adjust it here. If they're a little bit lower, I can actually pretty, pretty much go like this. Okay, so that, that gives me a very easy adjustment from person to person. Now, you, do you pull the reflector down as well so you keep your lighting consistent, or did you just have um, a Yeah, I mean, I will, move it, I will move it from somebody that's five feet tall to seven feet. I will just, if somebody is five four and then five six, and then five five, I'm gonna keep the reflector the same. And and which Cambo boom is that? That's the small one. I don't know, remember. Okay. There light boom, the small one, not the large okay. one. The, the small because it's it actually packs it packs uh, well with uh, the forty eight inch ten by bag for me. So this is the small one. Okay, great. Okay. Um Sasha, why don't you put the camera down and then I'm going to switch uh, here and I'm going to show you how I photograph with this one. Okay. Okay. So go back there. And I, you know, right now this is at 5.5. Um, let me see. This is. By the way, the number one thing people say when they first come up to us is, hi. I don't like my photo taken because I'm not photogenic. That's why yep. Yannick <laughs> says, I'm <laughs> photogenic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to turn on the other flashes so that they don't. And I just didn't check what group am I on there. I think A. OK. Yeah, A. OK. Yeah. OK. So basically, with this light setup, I want the light to be as down as possible. I'll move a little bit back. This way. Let me just make sure that everything is aligned. Ugh. So this is that the light sense adjustment is only one, and they tie it up as much as you can. <laughs> this is uh, and come, so you're going to be touching the reflector practically. Perfect. I'm at five point five. Obviously, I will check this. You know, when I do that, my selfie. Um, okay, so that's. Let me see. <laughs> okay, so that's obviously not bright enough. Okay, so and I probably bring the light even lower for the for Sasha. Here it is, perfect. Starting my frame, I'm gonna raise the power to six, and I'm shooting this one at 5.6, so. Okay, perfect, perfect. See, it's a little bit better, but it's, it's a little bit uh, slightly in the frame. So I'm gonna be a tiny bit up. Okay, perfect. So that's, okay. Perfect. And this is, you know, by the way, this, um, uh, this, what I did right now, um, I didn't have the slide, I didn't test it at all when I was setting up everything. Um, so this is totally from scratch. So different soft boxes are, have slightly different tint. So I do, you know, uh, even if I did the calibration before, I mean the, the white balance, I was still gonna do it this time because uh, the white diffusion material on the soft box that they're not always the same, uh, so it's important to change the color. Okay, so you see, like it cooled down big time. So if you can just go back there, a little bit more, perfect. Okay, just a tiny bit more, perfect, perfect. Slightly chin up, just a tiny bit, perfect. Turn your face a little bit this way, perfect. You got it, beautiful. That's awesome, and that's that's the best one. So Yannick, when you're doing, uh, you know, shooting people every two minutes, and you need to move that boom arm up and down, are you doing it yourself, or do you have someone that helps you do that? Um, I usually do it myself. I mean, this was I really set up everything from scratch here. Yeah. Um, so uh, the 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 problem with this light, and I, that's why I told you before, uh, <laughs> this light may not be the sexiest and the best but it gives you good results at a pretty high you know, volume. Um, I basically want to make sure that I have some kind of 
catch light here. You, you, when you don't have the catch light in the eye, you know that you went with this light a little bit too much, I mean too high, okay? So that's what's important. This, you know, this light may be more problematic with, you know, with people with a super deep eye socket. Um, but, you know, that's, you know, unfortunately, that's the price you have to pay to, if you want to do it at a super high volume. Mm -hmm. it's more forgiving with glasses. And this one is more forgiving with glasses because you can bring the face slightly chin down and you're not going to have any reflection whatsoever. Do you make any difference for, for older, older people or younger people? Or no, you because, you know, that's, why, that's why I'm shooting uh, with really pretty much flat lighting, you know, from the front. So it, feel, it, it fills the, you know, any lines on the skin as much as possible. So that's why you, you can see a lot less lines, you know, on, on people's faces. Besides under my eyes, but we have Well, yeah, but then, you know, yeah, you know. So let me show you. So this is, obviously, oops, this is a little bit too bright. I'm going to do this guy. Uh, I, perfect. All right. So there's definitely difference in the quality of light between you know, left and right. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, you know, so the... This Zoom is, in on the catch light, too. Yeah, so obviously the catch light is the difference, you know. Um, so you can see this this catch light versus this catch light, right? You can see a lot more, you know, the you know the brightness in the eye, you know, with, uh, you know, with the two lights versus this one. So the one on the right, I shoot at a super high volume, so like conferences, et cetera. And when I don't have to, you know, when I don't retouch the photos, um, you know, so that's, that's the reason because, you know, the, the one on the, on the left will still give you better results, but you have to adjust two lights, you know, and you have, you know, if you retouch it, you know, you, you know, you're gonna, uh, you have to retouch the, you know, the soft box, you know, from, uh, you know, from the frame as well. Do you ever send out retouching or do you do it all in house? No, I don't. I, I have a retoucher that I work with and yeah, okay. I, you know, I send everything for retouching. Okay, great. Okay. And how um, much light? So, did you mm -hmm. do you have a, a formula for how much light on the background versus the main, or is that just dependent on the environment? That's my personal choice, really. Got it. I'm, okay. I'm I'm tending. See, like, if you look at the right and left, you can see that the light fall off. Uh, I mean, the light hits the background a lot more on the the one on the right versus the left, uh -huh. right? So I could, you know, I could dial down the lights on the uh, uh, on, on the two stands that are hitting the background to bring the the background a little bit lower because I, I usually like the, a little bit darker gray versus two, you know, brighter gray. But it's really, you know, your personal choice. All right, so we've just hit uh, the just past the hour mark. So let's talk a little bit about how you get the the images to the kiosks yep. and choosing yep. and all so this that. This is basically the lights, you know, everything that I talked about is, is basically on, uh, let me change the, uh, here it is. This kind, so basically everything I cover, you know, here is on this slide. Yep. Uh, let me go to a presentation. Okay, pauses, facial expressions. So I talk about fewer pauses than, you know, normal session, try both subtle smile and regular smile. So we talked about that. Then three, four straight on photos, then two to four, you know, feet a slight angle. So that's basically when I showed you, you know, what I did with Sasha, that's basically what I do. You know, it's at the minimum, I do six photos, maybe six, six to eight photos. If I have a little bit of time, maybe I'll do like 15, you know, but that's basically it. Okay, uh, quickly go through the posing do's and don'ts. So stand, so that answered the question before, always have person standing. Um, Slightly photograph slightly from below um, because that that this way person will appear bigger you know like more you know uh, taller in, in the photo uh, face straight on works the best for the largest number of people so that's why we always you know do straight on turn feet and left and right um, always pay attention to the neck area yeah so you know obviously we're gonna have photograph people with different um, physiques so you know some people have better jawline definition some people have you know more challenging area here so that's why you always you know try to push it forward slide it in down that's you know the kind of uh, you know peter hurley you know approach here um and then avoid like for example if you you know if you are you know sideways try to you know avoid like you know too much you know uh chin down or more here because then start to build up on the skin here you know so we don't want that um 
And then, yeah, as I mentioned, talk some nonsense to take, you know, the mind of being photographed. Um, Peter Hurley says some awesome application called Hurleyism. 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 Uh, with basically, it will give you all the thought triggers. I mean, like the, the kind of triggers that you can talk to people. Um, so I always, always, often have this app running. Uh, and you know, basically, if I run blank, I just look at the app, and it gives me another nonsense to, to you know to tell the client. And basically, when you're working with people, you could be the biggest introvert, but when when Yannick or I, when we're behind the camera, we just give all of our energy. We're laughing. We're interacting. We're you know, yeah. You have to be the biggest extrovert when you work with people to make them feel good in front of the camera. Some people are surprised I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an introvert, um, you know, uh, so, but you know, when I started to photograph over the years, I had to develop this kind of anything goes approach, you know, so, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, you know, it's my two personalities. <laughs> so, but, you know, if I'm introvert, and I can talk nonsense, you know, even the, you know, if you're not an introvert, then it's even a bit easier, you know, so, um, okay. Posing down, so sitting, because the spine collapses and you don't want that. Uh, no upper body leaning forward. It just doesn't look good, especially if you photograph slightly from below. Do not, I, and this is just my personal choice, do not photograph from above. It doesn't matter what they, you, know, you ever learn that you know, it makes your you know, neck area look better. It just looks not that good in, in, a, in a headshot. The person looks smaller in headshots, and we don't want that. And it just, to me, looks like, you know, um, either was like 80s, semi yeah. 80s or 90s or maybe some no you know want to be influencers you know so <laughs> that's <laughs> so that's you know that's what it looks to me um don't lean oh well that thing don't lean the shoulder forward that's that's kind of no no for me i know some people do but this is more my personal choice i never do this i try to keep the shoulders you know straight on um and then no face unless, you know especially for for men don't ever lean your face towards the shoulder that's closer to the camera because that looks very feminine. And then see the build up here, you don't want that. I like it. You know, if I lean a little bit this way, I'm you know, I suddenly like, you know, all this area here, you know, cleans up. Okay. Okay, reliable technology, let's do that. Okay, so these are the tools that we use. Um, and um, not that many, I mean, what is it? Seven, you know? Um, so capture one, um, obviously we, we, we do for tethering. Uh, I, I mentioned before, you know, I always use sessions. I mean, we're not gonna go deep into, you know, uh, sessions versus catalog in capture one, but I always use sessions. I name the files based on uh, the date and who's the client. And then um, I copy from the clipboard the name of each person uh, that I photograph and I get that list if they pre-register. And I'll talk about it in just a second. Uh, so basically I name the, you know, if it's for like a client that people pre-register, that I know who they're going to be, then I name each photo uh, with the name of the person that, I'm be, that I photograph. So this way, later on, when I deliver the photos, they know who's who. Because, you know, the person that hired me, they sometimes they don't know 80% of the people they, you know, that we photograph. You know, they just know that, hey, we need to photograph 200 people, but they, they, they may never know who they are, you know. Um, so this is the workflow, right? So this is the workflow with pre-registration. So I use Acuity Scheduling, custom scheduling page for them, for all the people to register for their session. That allows me to have a much better flow of people uh, throughout the day. And then I tell you, I can tell the clients, hey, we had 80% capacity or we still, you know, I, I know exactly how many people they have. It, and it also solves the problems for them of chasing everybody to, you know, uh, and scheduling their spots. So they, they usually like it a lot. Um, then I export that into Google Sheets uh, or Excel, and then when I copy paste this into uh, Capture One to get the names, and then I use tether tools, you know, to, to tether, you know, into my camera, and obviously I use the Calbright color checker to initially to set the colors, and then I use Capture One Live uh, to uh, deliver the photos to the iPad. And let me quickly show you this uh, because it's pretty easy and it's super um, uh, super nice to have. Okay, so let's do this. So I'm going to go to Capture One, and basically with the subscription, one of the things is share online. So you're going to click it here. It's going to take a second um, until it connects to the, to the server. These are all the previous sessions that are still active for me. I'm going to share the oh, Capture we folder. We can't see it on the screen. Oh, you know what? This is a pop-up. Oh. Uh, you, can, you can do it on the cell phone. Yeah. I'll do it on the cell phone. 
Uh, but uh, actually, let's try it. Let's try it. OK. Can you see? OK, so this is why I click this icon here, I, and I select a capture folder. I say share and manage access. OK. I can copy. Um, copy, And actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, put a comment. So this is the, this is the gallery. Um, so you can actually click on it. Click on it. Um, I'm going to. So basically, these are the photos that I, you know, that we shot, and they're still loading because you know I just started. But you know, uh, they're coming up, they're coming up, and obviously I'm streaming the video plus other stuff, so it's not the fastest right now. But as you can still start to see the photos, so they, you know. So the the cool thing is that uh, when somebody uh, now marks it. And you, you can actually do it too, so you can mess up with my rating right now as well. But you know, I can click on the photo, and I just I say I want the five stars for this one. This is the one that I want to you know uh, to be retouched. When I go back to my uh, capture one, and I'm just okay. Then uh, where's that photo? Here it is. So that photo is automatically marked as five stars in my catalog. So, so when I filter now by five stars, I have the one photo already that's, that Sasha, you know, that I selected for Sasha. So as, in, as I photograph, you know, and basically I have an iPad, you know, sending, standing, sitting on a desk somewhere. Um, I basically, um, you know, let people, you know, select the photos. I said you're gonna select one photo or whatever number of photos the client has, uh, uh, purchased. I said you go to market with five stars, and once you market with five stars, you're all done. And uh, basically, that's what they do on the iPad. There's basically, you know, either, you know, swipe up, you know, or left and right to go from photo to photo. Uh, if they want to go with the grid. And, you know, it's actually pretty straightforward uh, in terms of, uh, you know, people understanding how to market five stars and everything. So the, the, the interface, must, you know, is pretty intuitive because very few people are, are confused in terms of what they're supposed to do, you know. Um, so yeah, so that's how. We, so this is the workflow. If when we photograph, you know, for a client that um, purchased a photo that to, to be retouched for each person, okay. Um, and the cool thing is that if I go back to capture one and say this didn't fire, so I can delete it. Um, if I delete, let's say, up to this photos, uh, and then if I want to, for example, this test one, I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to delete. So when I go back, these actually the photos get deleted from here as well. Uh, so it's actually you know pretty pretty cool you know synchronization you know both ways. That's yeah. awesome. You so know, you do, you just I, tell the, tell them to mark their own photos and not mark anybody yeah. else's and then move on, right? Exactly. And then you know some people are like, oh, but I cannot choose. So you know, so for example, you know, let's let's say like I forgot, you know, Sasha. So I said, you know what? I'm going to help you quickly. I'm going to mark. You know, this one no, it's not. I don't like. One second. Let's go back to here. I love this one. I'm going to mark it with three stars. I like this one. Three stars. Three stars. Three stars. Three stars. Three stars. Let's say three stars. Okay, so I'm like, I, you know, I'm going to pre-select some photos for you. So now that I'm going to go uh, here, I'm going to filter, and I'm going to do only three stars. And now they say like, oh, you know, now I help them out because I pre-selected some photos that I think are good. So they don't look at 10 photos or 15 photos. They look at, you know, fewer photos. And now they can make the decision much easier and faster. And I say, you don't care. I don't care how many three stars you, you have. All I care that you have only one five star selected, you know, from from your headshot. So now you're shooting them, and then they're selecting within their time frame, or are you shooting, and then they're selecting while you shoot someone else? Uh, yeah. So basically, if I have, let's say, if I have five minutes to photograph them, they have the next five minutes when I photograph the next person right. uh, to select the photos. I usually have multiple iPads. You know, I usually have, you know, depending how many people I have and how little time I have. Oh, right. If I have 10 minutes, if I have 10 minutes per person, one iPad is fine. If I have, let's say, five minutes or less, then I have four iPads. Uh -huh. So, you know, so then if somebody takes longer, the next person doesn't have to wait for that person. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, we're running really long. We're about an hour and 20 minutes now. Do you have any final parting? Yes. 
Yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, let me just quickly go to the rest and let me just, I'm almost, almost done. Almost done. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to make sure that, you know, that, because I know a lot of people, you know, were very interested in that. So that uh, now, yeah. um, okay. So now I talk about the scheduling, but basically accurate scheduling allows you to have people organized before, you know, so that you can have a whole list of people coming. Uh, this is the workflow with the instant delivery. So it's, Almost the same. There are two main differences. Instead of having acuity at the beginning to, for people to register, I use JotForm. So basically, I have an iPad uh, with JotForm kiosk where people enter their information um, to, you know, uh, basic information, first name, last name, email. Uh, then that it's a live transfer to Google Sheets. So I still copy their names. I calibrate and tell it to, you know, again, to calibration. And then I use simple photo share. Uh, it's a super easy app. Basically, you run an app on your computer. You know, it monitors your, you know, your folder where you exported the photos, and then puts those, you know, uh, those photos online. And on the kiosk, on the iPads, you basically go to uh, the link that it provided you, and then uh, you know, people can send the photos, you know, to themselves. So the difference here is the simple photo share uh, allows them to send photos to themselves through either email, text message. And they can do it up to, I believe now it's either eight photos or 10 photos at a time. And then not, nothing gets retouched. Basically, you know, they receive those photos instantly. Um, so that's why the photos that I photograph, they cannot have any soft boxes or frames, you know, um, in, in the photo. Uh, so I have to have a clean, clean, relatively clean photo already. So this is mainly for super high volume and then uh, conferences. You know, so when people basically receive the photos, you know, uh, you know as soon as I photograph them. Okay, um, so this is basically the two, you know, the two flows: either capture one live or simple photo share. You know, so we talked about the gear. Um, if you sign up, you're gonna receive the copy of the presentation. Uh, so basically, you're gonna receive everything here. You know what I use? Uh, here it is. All this, you know, basically, and then the software. So capture one live. With cap I mean, capture one, capture one live. Jot form. Uh, is basically a form application. You can use Google Forms, but I prefer JotForm. It's a little bit more powerful. Google Sheets, you know, as a spreadsheet, simple photo share, and Zenfolio for online galleries. Zenfolio only do like a large conference, and I po I want to post everybody's photos in the online gallery. So if somebody comes to me later on, it's like, oh, I didn't receive my photo for whatever reason, or ended up in a spam. I was like, you know what? Here are here's the Zenfolio, the the online gallery. Find your photo and download it from there. You know, so this basically, it you know, it saves me time, and I don't have to you know, try to find, you know, people's photos after the, you know, after the conference. Um, and that's it. So, um, should we do the winner? Do we, so this you, is, you know, the, this is your last chance to, <laughs> end, you know, to register and to, you know, to get one, to get the presentation, but also to enter the chance to win one-on-one -on -one mentoring with me. Okay. Uh, so in the meantime, I'm going to uh, maybe five minutes, Brenda, for, uh, for uh, questions and answers. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I want to tell, uh, tell everybody here, too, that um, I've arranged for there to be, uh, if you go to Calibrite.com, if you have any, anything you want to purchase from Calibrite, for everyone who's attended the webinar today, I've arranged for you to use, have a, a, a discount code for 10% off one order, anything you want to order. And the code is W-A-S-I-O. Vasio. Ooh, All right? nice. I like it. Uh, you do, uh, when you're setting up with a client, you don't, you're not giving them a choice of background. You're telling them what you're offering, correct? Yeah, basically, you know, um, so that's why, you know, um, it's a good question. I try on my website to have a very consistent look. Yes, we can arrange to have other looks, but if something doesn't fall within my standards, I don't post it on the website. Okay. So that's why, yeah, if they have specific guidelines for their specific company, I'll, of course I will do it, uh, but I will not post it. Okay. <laughs> and this is, this is a question I'd like you to answer. What kind of a conference has 4,000 people who need headshots? Um, so we did for nurses. Um, for a, the, the national, was it American Nurses Association? Uh, they had 10, 000, 12,000 people in, attending. And basically we were shooting there for four days. Uh, we photographed a good number. And then the other one was, uh, we actually this was, so it was conference and another one we did last year. 
Um, and uh, we, uh, you know, this was less than 4,000. This was 1,000. But we forgot for a company that, uh, you know, basically had a global meeting and all the partners from around the world, yeah. from the whole world came, and we photograph all the partners of that company uh, in four days. In, um, so if Masha, is, if Masha, you know, is on the you know Gene? this, Gina, I know is not, but if Masha is on the on this webinar, she was the one uh, assisting us. So when you get into those big ones, you do have extra people. That makes perfect sense. Of course, yes, 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 yeah, always. yeah. Um, so are most of the things that you're doing these high volume things you're being paid by one company or you're not having 4000 individual people paying you right no never okay so you're doing this with a with a single pay uh yes. situation right uh yes. and you're i'm assuming you're pay, you're getting paid by the head not by uh, the hour? not always sometimes okay. you know if it's retouched if, if, if the, per, you know, if the company purchase uh, like a retouch photo for each person, then yeah, if they're sitting fee and then, you know, there's photo fee. If we do it at conferences or like, you know, high volume, uh, we do a flat rate per day. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Good enough. No multiple days. So, you know, whatever, you know, that. I'm just scanning through the, mm -hmm. uh, blah, 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 blah. You've answered almost every question I'm seeing. Yeah, so you, you're shooting raw and JPEG, yes or no? Uh, just raw. Just raw. And so when they send, send the image to themselves, is it a, in a raw format or are, is it? No, sending? no, no. So, so, yeah, when I do with simple photo share, yeah. um, I basically, um, I do, uh, I export as JPEGs into okay. a, a hot folder and then uh, the simple photo share grabs those JPEGs. Yeah. The, oh, great. Okay. So now how do you deal with like super light skin people versus darker skin people? Are you changing your exposure at all? Or is no. this wraparound light? I, so I, sweet? Sometimes I adjust yeah. tiny bit, you know, if it's at a conference, I may, you know, the consistency is less important. You know, right. if it's like a large conference, if I, it's for a company and they get like a photo retouch, then, you know, once they select the final photo, I may tweak a little bit to make it, the skin looks better, you know, to, to make the skin look, uh, look better. But, you know, for the conference, I do basically, if everything in general looks good, then it's, you know, then it look, looks good. And here's a good question with capture one, you're saving on a hard drive. Do you worry about that one hard drive cache crashing or are you, uh, making a backup at the same time you're shooting. No, you know what? Uh, in the old days, when you have real, you know, like those physical drives, yeah, uh, the, the the risk of something, you know, failing is, you know, uh, was much higher. Um, right. right now, the laptop, the new laptops, it's all solid state drives, uh, yeah. or built in. You know, like the MacBook Pro, basically the hard drive is built in into, uh, you know, into the, into the board. There's really no mechanical things. Right. right? So, so even, essentially, even in the worst case, something yeah. gets corrupted. It's not like the whole drive gets corrupted. Maybe the allocation table gets corrupted, but the data is still there. You know, so have the second laptop, you know, just in case, you know, so that you can swap it, but the data will not get lost. So if the person is getting the, the photos and the company is getting the photos, I'm sure you have situations like that. They're emailing them to themselves, so you don't have to worry about all that. You're delivering them yeah, once to it, the company. It's a delivery. Once they send it themselves, I don't care whether I have those photos you know, later on yeah, or not. Right. You know? right. The company, the, 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 you know, the, the one when they select, yeah, that's you know, very, you know, very important. And then as soon as I'm done, I'm copying into another solid-state drive so that I don't delete them. For me, the higher – the, yeah. the Higher risk is for me not to delete something versus the the you know the the drive crashing. Uh, agreed, agreed. <laughs> I'm, I'm, right. the, I'm the I'm the I'm the troublemaker, not the drive. You know? I think you are a fabulous educator, and we are very 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 grateful to you for coming today. Uh, Calibrite is very proud to sponsor this webinar. Uh, I've learned a lot. And uh, yeah, get your better half in there. Yeah, That's the best exactly. thing to do. <laughs> and thank you all for coming. We we've had uh, we've had a really good time. Everybody have a great rest of your day. Uh, and thanks, thank, thanks so much. Ooh, ooh,